Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Haltex Technically Speaking. Today, I'm here on the diner with this SR20 DET-powered Nissan Silvia. I'm gonna be taking a look at how the variable cam timing works on this engine and how to tune it correctly. Now you might recognize this car from the S chassis shootout video that we did a couple of weeks ago. And the reason why I've got it on the dyno today is that my good friend Adam Nish and I were speaking when we were at that track day. We were talking about the SR20 engine, which ones are the good ones, which ones are the less good ones. We both came to the conclusion that the S15 SR20, the one that's got the variable cam control on the inlet camshaft is the pick of the bunch. Now what that does is allows us to change the cam timing based on engine RPM. It's not a fully variable camshaft, meaning that we don't actually pick the target cam angle from say zero to 30 or 40 or 50 degrees advanced and everywhere in between based on engine RPM and load. Something like the Ford Barra engine or the K series engines that all have the infinitely variable cam control. This one is an on off switched style cam control. Nissan's did it with this. They also did it with the R34 GTT engines and a bunch of other style of engines where they've got the on off style switch. Today, I'm gonna to be running this car up with the VCT solenoid turned off in the software to see what sort of power the car makes. Then I'm gonna turn it on all the time and see what power it makes. Then I'll figure out the best way to mix both of those together to get the best drivability out of the car, to get the most area under the graph on the dyno, resulting in the best car to drive. For reference, this Sylvia does have an upgraded turbocharger. It's got a stock bottom end. It's got a set of camshafts, a set of valve springs a set of the upgraded Nissan R35 coils. Uh, it makes about 280 kilowatts at the wheels. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll run it up with no variable cam control and see what it does. So if you probably start with the wiring of the variable cam solenoid in this car, it's got a switched power supply that goes to one side and it's got a DPO, a digital pulsed output that comes from the engine management system to supply the ground to the other side of the solenoid. When we don't want the cam control to be active, that DPO or digital pulsed output is open circuit. When we do want the cam solenoid to be engaged, we want to apply ground to that side. So we can do all of that through the software. The idea here is that when we do energize that solenoid, oil gets fed in through the cam solenoid and adjusts the inlet camshaft. Now you don't always want that camshaft to be just on and fully advanced because at idle and very light loads, we actually want the camshaft to be retarded on this particular engine where it's going to make more power. Likewise, up top, say above three, four, five thousand RPM, we also want to retard that camshaft. So we only want to turn it on in the mid range to get the most power on the dyno curve under the graph. In the software, we've got some conditions that need to be met before the cam timing is going to be turning on and off. So we've got a minimum vehicle speed. So we have to be going above 15 kilometers an hour. The reason for that is if we start the car in a car park and we give it a whole bunch of revs. We don't want the cam solenoid slapping on and off when you're free revving the engine or when you're riding the clutch trying to get the thing to go because it's not very good on the valve train. The next one is a minimum throttle position. So typically we'd like to have the throttle position above about 40 or 50% in order for the VCT to be enabled. The reason we do this is that we don't want to be part mid corner, part throttle, going back and forward across the enabling range, having that cam solenoid flicking on and off and on and off, essentially changing the cam profile as we're part throttling because you are going to feel that in the car and it is going to feel rough. We've got a minimum coolant temperature. So the VCT is only going to enable above 40 degrees Celsius. We've got a minimum oil pressure. Now this is an important one, especially on an SR20 engine. The oil pressure needs to be above 21 pounds in this particular case for the VCT to operate. If you cast your memory back to the Sylvia day that we did when we were talking about the SR20, the rocker arms, the hydraulic lifters, if we've got low oil pressure and we're trying to turn the cam solenoid on and off, there is a higher risk of throwing a rocker arm in turn, dropping a cylinder and having all sorts of problems. So we want to make sure that the thing's got good oil pressure before we turn the VCT on. The next setting as we move down the page is the RPM hysteresis. And this kind of touches back on the throttle position thing I was talking about. The RPM hysteresis means the RPM has to change this amount before or after the enabling condition in order to turn the cam control on or off. This is another way that we stop the cam control flickering on off, on off, on off when you're right on that point of enabling or disabling it. And finally, the fun part at the very bottom. 
So we've got a nice little graph here, and what this is doing is showing us when the cam solenoid is gonna be active and when it's not. So we can have a look at the graph and say that in deep vacuum, it's gonna be on between 1100 RPM and 6000 RPM. And from zero vacuum or into boost onwards, it's gonna be on at 1000 RPM and turn off again at 5000 RPM. So for this demonstration, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn the cam timing off altogether. We're gonna get the engine a rev, have a look at what sort of power it makes, what sort of torque it makes. Then we'll do a power run with the cam solenoid turned on the entire time. And we'll have a look at where that power and where that torque intersects. While we're here, this might actually be a good time to talk about the gear detection strategy that we're using in this S15 Silvia. So this has got a road speed sensor in the gearbox and it's got a crank and cam position sensor so we know the engine RPM. If we know the engine RPM and if we know the output shaft speed from the gearbox, that means that there's a constant on a manual transmission so that we can figure out each of the gear ratios without having an actual gear position sensor. So if I cruise down here and go into transmission, gear ratio or gear, gear detection type, gear ratio, it's an S15, so we've got six forward gears. If I come down here and hit gear ratios, as long as I've got a road speed signal and an engine RPM signal, I can drive along at any speed I like in first gear, which is what we're in at the moment, I'll hit calibrate. In first gear, in this particular car, it'll do 8.1 kilometers an hour per 1,000 RPM. So if I'm doing 1,000 RPM in gear, it'll be doing 8.1 kilometers an hour. If I do 2,000 RPM, it'll do 16.2 kilometers an hour. This will change based on the gear ratio. So in the second gear, it doesn't matter what RPM we do the calibration at, we can do anything we like. So I'm in second gear now and I hit calibrate. Third gear. Calibrate. Fourth gear. Calibrate. Fifth. Same thing, so we'll do this for every gear and then into six. Oh. There we go, six gear. Okay, so now in the bottom of the screen here we can see our gear. If I come back, we're in fifth gear, come back to fourth, come back to third. If I let go of the gear altogether, I'll put it into neutral and just roll to a stop. Comes back to neutral, you can see that it rolls down through the gear. So keep in mind that because it's based on the gear ratio, if you're rolling without the gear in any particular gear, the ECU is just going to bring it down and down and down until you come back to neutral. Back to the task at hand. Now let's bring it up. We're going to bring it up to fourth gear. I'm going to turn the variable cam timing off and do our first pull with no cam timing at all. So that's our run with the cam timing fully disabled. So now I'm gonna turn the cam timing back on and see what sort of power and torque we're at. We'll look at the graph and figure out when we should turn it on and when should we should turn it off. our eyes over to the dyno screen here, we're going to see some interesting things. Down the bottom, so remember that this thing does have a set of Tomei drop-in camshafts in it. Down the bottom here, the first thing that will, the red graph here, the red one is where I've turned the cam control off altogether. It never ever turned on. The blue graph is with the cam turned on the entire time. So with the red graph, we can see that we lost a bunch of bottom end power 
So we've lost somewhere in the range of about 60 newt meters of torque at the wheels, uh, around sort of 30 kilowatts, give or take. So percentage wise, it's quite a lot of power. As we come up in the RPM, once we get to around here, this valley here, 5,462 RPM, all of a sudden things cross over, it changes. So before where we had our camshaft advanced, it's rolled over in the top end because the engine wants the, the inlet camshaft to be retarded at higher RPM and it wants it to be advanced at low RPM. What we can now do is look through the software and we'll say, okay, 5,460 is where those power lines crossed. So I'm gonna turn the cam control on down low, but then I'm gonna turn it off at about 5,000 RPM, just a little bit before where those lines crossed. And I'm really hoping to do one more power run that gets the best of both of these. So it's got the bigger power down low. Then as we get higher in the RPM and the cam turns off, we'll pick up this top line and we'll get the best of both worlds. In the software, the way that I made the camshaft stay on the whole time was to manipulate this, the max load off RPM. You can see here in the screen where it's green, it's gonna be on. So it's gonna be on essentially from 1000 RPM all the way to 10,000 RPM, meaning it was never gonna turn off. If I just go to the off RPM here and change that to 5000 RPM, we can see the shape here changes to give you a visual representation of where the camshaft turns on and where it turns off. Uh, I did say on the screen that it crossed over at about 5,400 RPM, and I'm gonna make it switch off just a little bit, but about 400 RPM below that, just to give that airspeed time to cross over, and I think that'll be about right. So let's give it a run and see what the difference is. As far as cam control demos go, that could not have gone any better. So first thing I did was run the car up to get it nice and warm. So I've warmed up the engine, the gearbox, the transmission, the wheels, the diff, the tires. So we've got a super stable test bed. The first pull, the red one here, this one comes up really lazy to come on. Then up the top, it makes really good power. That one, I had the cam turned off the entire time. The second pull, the blue one, I had the cam turned on the entire time. And you'll see up the top here, the power rolls over and it didn't make the same top power. Purple, the third pull, is the one where I've enabled the cam control and I've turned it off at 5,000 RPM. So the cam was active down low. Then at this crossover point where all of the power and all of the torque intersects, I've then turned that cam off to get the best of both worlds. And it's super impressive where down here, we can see the torque, the torque down low with the cam turned on. It's making excellent torque. So it's making 367, 363 newt meters at the wheels. Whereas when the cam was turned off down there, it was making 270 newt meters. The difference in power, it had either 133 kilowatts at the wheels or 182 kilowatts at the wheels at 4,700 RPM and at about 120 kilometers an hour. This is a huge difference. Percentage wise, 133 to 180 kilowatts at the wheels, all from programming that cam solenoid. So please, if you've got an S15 VCT engine, don't just haphazardly remove the VCT and throw it in the bin. Make sure that you're programming it correctly. Make sure you're choosing the right camshafts that make use of the VCT because something like this picking up that much bottom end power, that, that is all the difference between this thing being a super drivable streetcar or even though this has still got a T2 flange style turbocharger, having something that feels laggy to come on. And then once it comes on, yeah, it's a powerhouse, but you can see from here that we mismatch both of those and you've got 
the best of both worlds. There's no reason why this thing needs to be laggy in order to make that 280-ish kilowatts in the top end. So there you have it, another dimension to your engine tuning. Yes, you've got boost control, you've got ignition timing, you've got fueling, you've also got cam timing. Hopefully, electronic cam timing. Hopefully, infinitely variable cam timing on your engine. But keep in mind, if you don't have electronically adjustable cam gears, you can use a vernier style cam gear to dial your engine in. So if you do have a S13, a S14, a RB25, the majority of them, an RB26, a whole range of those engines, you can use those mechanical cam gears in order to dial in the best of both worlds. So you might want to try and advance that camshaft up as much as possible down low without sacrificing too much of the top end. So it's really about dialing in that camshaft in order to meet your driving needs. Well, after spending a bit of time with these S chassis and the SR20 engines, I made up my mind that the S15 with the VCT is the one for me. It's the one that would give me the best down low drivability, but it's still 280, 300 kilowatt top end, something that's gonna make 350 to 500 horsepower somewhat reliably. Mate, that's an absolutely cracking engine. I hope that they start reproducing these things and there's plenty more of them around. As always, thanks very much for watching. My name's Scott, catch you next time.